Your windproof lighter is engineered to work best with Zippo Premium Lighter Fluid and Flints. Lighter fluid will evaporate even when the lighter is not used, so be sure to always keep the lid closed and it's a good idea to refill before each outing. Take caution to do the falling away from any source of fire or flame. To fill your lighter, remove the inside unit from the case. Turn it over and lift the felt pad to reveal the packing material in the fuel chamber. Use an unfolded paper clip or small tool if the pad is too hard to lift. Slowly saturate the packing material with lighter fluid. Stop filling when the fluid reaches the top of the packing or begins to change color. Do not overfill. If overfilled, the lighter will leak fuel. Avoid getting the fluid on your skin as it is a skin irritant. If contact with skin does occur, wash the affected areas promptly with mild soap and water. Insert the inside unit back into the case, making sure to wipe any excess fluid from the lighter and your hands before igniting the lighter. Be sure the fuel can is closed and there is no spilled fuel in the vicinity before igniting. If you plan to keep the lighter in your pocket, we suggest placing it bottom down. Using your thumb, strike the flint wheel in a downward motion to create a spark. If flame does not appear, repeat. Once a flame has appeared and you are finished using it, close the lid to extinguish. This lighter does not self-extinguish. Flints are something that need to be replaced approximately every few weeks for an average user. To replace the flint, we need to remove it from the flint tube. First, remove the inside unit from the case. Using a small screwdriver or a coin, slowly remove the spring. The spring has tension, so be sure the spring doesn't fly away. Remove the remaining piece of flint by gently tapping the inside unit on a hard surface. Remove any stubborn flint slivers or residue with an unfolded paper clip. Insert a new flint into the brass colored flint tube. Be sure not to confuse the brass tip on the end of the flint spring. Even though it looks like a flint, it is not a flint. Replace the flint spring and turn clockwise until tight. Be sure the screw is tightened so the lid can fully close. A tight seal will help delay the lighter fluid's evaporation. Retighten if the lid does not close. If the flint wheel binds after a new flint is installed, turn the wheel backwards a few times. You can keep extra flints under the felt pad for future use. Initially, a new wick is white. Over time, the wick will turn black from carbon buildup, which will reduce performance. When this happens, we need to trim the wick. Using a pair of tweezers or needle nose pliers, gently pull it up until the clean wick appears. Grab the wick as far down as possible to avoid ripping the wick. Trim the end evenly with the top of the chimney using scissors or wire cutters. This should be performed once or twice a year. Each wick is almost four inches in length, so after two to three trimmings, you'll need to replace the wick. The wick should be changed if the lighter does not light properly, or if the ignition process has to be repeated multiple times. To install a new wick on a regular or slim model lighter, we need to remove all of the fuel chamber's components. The flint screw, felt pad, packing material, and the old wick. Insert a new wick either downward through the chimney or up through the bottom of the fuel chamber and bend the top portion of the wick over the chimney to hold it in place during assembly. Carefully reinstall the packing material in the same exact order as it was removed. Replace the packing material in small pieces, interweaving the wick between the padding in a serpentine or S pattern. The goal is to make sure the wick has as much contact with the packing material as possible. Reinstall the felt pad over the flint tube and secure it with the flint spring as previously mentioned. Be sure the flint didn't fall out during this process. Trim the wick evenly with the chimney height and reinstall the insert into the case.